digitization could be very useful in agriculture. But it, it is, and it's, it's really an issue to understand first of, of what are technologies, how do they function in our society. And I'd, I'd offer you two or three sort of what uh, I think of as being laws of technology. One law of technology, for me at least, is that any new major technology, any new platform technology that, is, that comes into a society which is not itself a just society, a fair society, then that technology will exacerbate the gap between the rich and the marginalized. It's inevitable. And it doesn't just mean the rich become richer, it does mean the marginalized become poorer. Well, it means massive controls more than ever before. It means that um, the small producer, uh, whether he's growing uh, vanilla in Madagascar or she's, she's growing rice in, in China, uh, could have every aspect of, of her field dominated by a, a company that's long distance that can say, here's what you need to do exactly in that field uh, to get the maximum profits as perceived by that company. So here are the seeds you have to grow, here's the pesticides you have to use, here's the fertilizers you have to use, here's the water concentrations you have to use, the machinery. Uh, and if you do those things, we will give you crop insurance. And if you don't do those things, we will not give you crop insurance. Um, and, and if you, or we won't give you a market as well, you won't be able to sell it anywhere. And that ability to have on the spot, real time control over the field is, is I think quite alarming. I mean, we now have drones in, in, in Japan, which are spraying, what used to be one third of, of all of the rice grown in Japan, it's probably up to half now, and they can again fly over the fields and change what they do by the algorithm that tells them this property gets this spray, that property gets that spray. So again, the control there is huge. And, and that, I think, is, can have potential benefits in a just society again, but if it's not a just society, then it has great risk for farmers. For workers, it's, it's also that. It's, it's in, in the same kinds of concerns about Cargill with its palm oil plantations in Malaysia. Uh, can, they say they're only monitoring to make sure that there isn't any uh, um, deforestation that's illegal. What they're really doing is that they're monitoring as well their own, their own workers and the, to make, control their workers better. But we also have a system where now in the rest of the food system, uh, from the, uh, the, the Colonel Saunders chicken places, the, the KFCs, to the, to the Walmarts, to, to uh, uh, all, of the, all the parts of the food system, where workers are less relevant, where it's possible to bring in robots, it's possible to automate the system much more precisely than before, it's possible to have driverless vehicles. Yara, the world's second biggest fertilizer company in Norway, is actually developing driverless or pilotless uh, ships to transport its fertilizer around the world. Uh, so we see the removal of workers along the food system. Again, uh, the technology uh, is vast. It's got many elements to it, and I can, some, much of it is actually being used by farmers now that is to the advantage of farmers. So that it's possible, and we see today, that farmers will come together to exchange seed in an agroecology workshop, perhaps in Central America or, or in, in West Africa, and they'll exchange seed. And they will help each other afterwards in saying, when a farmer says, well, from a different country even, or a different continent even sometimes, well, the, 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 plant, the seed you gave me are doing this, and they take a picture of it with their, their, their cell phone, and the farmer in the other country can say, oh, I recognize that problem, here's what you can do about it. And, and increasingly, uh, because farmers are organized and because they have, they have associations, they're able to get that information translated or used in a way that they can help them understand the pests and diseases that might affect that crop or might give them advice as to what kinds of seed they should be growing. Because we are faced with climate change, we are faced with changing conditions. The critical framework for that, the, the policy framework is, that we must start with a couple of assumptions. One is policymakers must decide that the arbiters of what should be used and not used and how it should be used should be the producers. They should be the ones who, make the, who set the policy framework for how to use these technologies. And policymakers have to trust the producers, the small, the, the peasants, 
in, in, help, in making those decisions, as being the leaders on those decisions.